<clears throat> we're, we're here. We're here. Ram Film, Film Reviews is here. Welcome back, back to, to the, the show. And we're back. This is Rand Film Reviews. I am Randall, and this is my amazing, awesome friend, Mac. And we're back. One more time. One more game. We're back from the dead. With uh, <laughs> a completely unexpected chain of events that occurred today. Yes. It's... This is not what I envisioned was going to happen when we planned uh, this return to... A film, Ram Film Review, mm -hmm. at all. This is not what I thought would happen. Mm -hmm. I was excited that we were going to get back to it, do exactly. another review, because it's been a couple weeks now. Right? Yeah, about three weeks, yeah, the yeah. last one we did was... Like right after New Year's. Two or three days before New Year's, correct? No, we didn't, we didn't, yeah, we, we did after New Year's. Oh yeah, we did, uh... Yeah, we did December, and, uh... New Year's uh, Evil. New Year's Evil after New Year's. Yeah. Oh, it feels like three weeks. But we're here. We're, we're here. here. We got reviews. It's here. We got something to show you. <laughs> so, as always, I bring movies to random. Like, let's choose. And he was between two movies. Yep. And this was just the perfect choice. Uh, we bring you 2014's Stage Fright. Yep. Directed by Senor Jerome Sable, which who was also a co-composer. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yep, 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 yep. This movie is so fucking underrated. I've never Welcome, heartless weed. Yo, Nick. Never heard of it. Uh, scrolling through eBay, looking at that Blu-rays horror movies. Yep. I see Stage Fright. I look it up. Yeah. I find one from like 1950, but no, nothing related to it. Uh, and then I read the synopsis a little bit, and it says, a uh, slasher serial killer that hates musicals. I was like, yes, I'm bidding on it, I'm buying this, Randall and I gotta watch it. Yep. And uh, it blew us away, man. I had nothing, I don't think neg negative to say, especially coming from me, I hate <laughs> fucking musicals. I fucking so, despise them. Th th there is a little more that went into it, because he brought a stack of movies. Mm-hmm. And I had to choose from one, right? And we were just trying to figure it out. Okay, what are we going to watch? And then in the mix of all of that, like, uh, Mac is scrolling through, like, social media stuff or whatever. And he goes, oh, shit, Meatloaf died too. Mm. And the first thing that caught my eye looking at the cover of Stage Fright is that it literally has Meatloaf's name on it because he is one of the... Uh, Star is yeah. one of the people in the sh in the movie in the in the whole entire thing. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you're good, bro. You're good. Hey, what's up, Alex? What's up, Alex? And Nick? <clears throat> damn, Nick, why you leave us, man? <laughs> so, yeah, Mac shows me this, and I'm like, okay, um, I'm like, I mean, I feel like maybe in honor and rest in peace, mm -hmm. meatloaf. Rest in peace, Louis Anderson. As well, yeah. Rest in peace, Bob Saget, because we haven't been on since be since before he passed. Like so many people have passed. And the young guy from you told me from. Uh, oh yeah, the star from yeah Moon Knight. Yeah. Like dude, this fucking year, bro. Already this fucking month. <laughs> Yo, it, it These just past days. It just wanted to start kicking you in the fucking face. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, we saw we saw. Well, I noticed that Meatloaf was on it. And immediately I was like, I think we got to do this one. Mm -hmm. um, I feel it's just like, you know, the perfect possibility or the perfect irony, right? Yeah. That you would bring a movie and, you know, on the day, uh, you know, that Meatloaf passes away, it's like it's right there. Actually, yeah, I think he passed away yesterday. Today was Louis Anderson. Was it yesterday? Oh, yeah, yeah you know what? He passed 20th. away last night. The 20th, yeah. Yeah, he passed away like last night, so, I think it was. Yeah, it's but still, you know, it's it's still soon. So, uh, Alex, I'm doing great, man. Hopefully, you're doing good. Hopefully, your mental health is good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I felt I felt it was just uh, the perfect the perfect like domino effect, right? There was mm -hmm. just like there you go. We get to like not only watch 
the great and amazing meatloaf for you know a, apart from being the musician he was he had he astounded us in rocky horror picture show he's done so many things that were just incredible through his career and then we see this and it's a movie i haven't seen i see that it mentions musical mm -hmm. and i read the back and it says a face melting musical and immediately i look at mac i'm like dude are you sure you yeah. want to watch this one and he was like yeah i'm like it says it's a musical fuck it <laughs> i said i was gonna do it i was like all right let's do this i'm down for it listen you <laughs> Damn. I knocked him off. What do you mean? <laughs> He's saying you knocked off meatloaf for the meat so you can do the review. Hey. <laughs> a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> do it for the views. Yeah. Do it for the grand. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, ultimately, you know, I am a big fan of musicals. Yeah. Like, I'm really big into musicals. Right, so for sure, I was. You're thinking of the song, aren't you? Oh no, I was just thinking about the, the first scene when they start uh, they started singing. Yeah. I immediately saw him just look at me. <laughs> and honestly, inside I was like, "Fuck, the singing again." <laughs> because it starts right off with it. Yeah, a bunch it's of kids in a school well, bus. Not, yeah. Well, first is. Yeah. First, no, actually, the first scene got you good. All right, that was amazing. The first scene was great. All right, so let's just get to it. Okay, so. Horror musical uh, slash comedy, right? Canadian horror. And, yeah, it's it's it was filmed in Canada. I don't know how much it's Canadian, but definitely filmed in Canada. Mm -hmm. I don't know if all the actors are from Canada or what maybe they did with that. Canadian horror, so... Yeah, well, fuck it. Canadian... Well, maybe uh, that's how they got the money. Yeah, so, Canadian them. horror, because, yeah, if you film in Canada, they, get, they pay you to film in Canada. I don't know if they still do it, but they normally do. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so... First scene is dark alley, mm -hmm. guy running, sweating, like looking frightened, like you know he's being chased. Correct. And then we see the first glimpse. Yeah, the camera pans, and you just see the a masked figure. Yeah. Right. Pale masked figure. And the, just, and the entrance yeah. was just pristine, clean, mm -hmm. really beautiful. And it's just like an unexpected moment where you just don't see that it's going to happen at that moment. And it just, boom. Yeah, I just so tell Randall, I just tell Randall to re rewind it. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, we got to watch that again. Yeah. And yeah, it proceeds to the guy gets stabbed. <laughs> what happened? Nick said, wait, Canadian movies are anything other than a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy, the guy gets stabbed. He falls to the ground. Then we have... The beautiful uh, mini driver. Mini driver, yes. She is one of the well, for a short time in the movie, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So she pops in. You see her, and you start like the whole scene looks like this is like a actual killing yeah. in the movie. None of it mm -hmm. seems like it's anything else. And as soon as she sees the guy stabbed in the chest, mm -hmm. she stretches out her hand mm -hmm. and just goes, "No." And it goes into a singing thing. Hands out, you see the, the then, audience, the stage, everything. And so I was like, holy shit, okay. Really well fucking done. Mm -hmm. So, boom. Camera backs out. The guy pulls the knife out. It ends up being like a fake knife with a red scarf tied to mm -hmm. it. To give the impression of blood. Which was really well done. And it's something that they do do in musicals oh, and nice, in plays okay. like this. Like, it is one of the tricks that they do to not always have just blood packets everywhere. Because then they have to do cleanup and shit. So... The red scarf, boom, mm -hmm. signifies blood. She starts uh, finishing off her final aria to close out the musical. And it ends. Musical ends. She goes to her fucking, uh, her green room, her... Mm -hmm. Dressing room, I guess. Yeah, her, yeah her dressing room, like her personal dressing mm -hmm. room or whatever. Little interactions here and there and shit like that. And while she's in the dressing room, mass figure comes up again. Caressing her. Yeah. You know, she's like, oh, no. no. Yeah. We're going to be seen. And then uh, the guy, the girl, right, when Minnie Driver reacts mm -hmm. to it, like, 
she accepts the groping, mm-hmm. but says we shouldn't be doing this here because he's just outside, yeah. meaning uh, her partner. Um, and then it proceeds to, I think, the best killing dude. of the film, you know, spoilers, but whatever. Dude, they, they, but I mean... This, there's, but the thing is, dude, there's so many good kills in this fucking movie. They're all creative, but this is just the best. It was so well done. I wasn't expecting the length of how they would go, get to that scene. That kill was very scream-like. Yeah. It was because it was Butcher, mm-hmm. right? And it goes, <laughs> Butcher right to throat first, mm-hmm. and then just proceeds with the oh, yeah, no, consecutive and, and stabbing. His, his grunting, like... Yeah. You can just feel the pain and like anger yeah. behind the mask. It was a, it was it was very much just straight aggression. Oh Emo- yeah, emotional, personal. Yeah. Uh, and then the ending. The ending was just wow. Yeah. It was almost like a fucking Zoro moment where he just went <laughs> right into the fucking mouth and just And they ex- uh, dude, executed it, it so, so well, good. yeah. It was so fucking good. So uh, Mini Driver doesn't last long in the movie, but it was placement of her death mm-hmm. to tell the rest of the story because her children were the ones that uh, had seen her before in the, in the dressing room mm-hmm. and all that shit. So now she's dead. But her daughter wants to be a singer just like her mom. Yeah, 10 years later, later passed. She's yeah. a part of a... A camp. Camp center stage camp or something like that. A limelight camp. Yeah, which is... They, they do those too. It's a camp for... For... Basically like Glee Camp, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, for actors and singers and uh, anything that's arts, like in that in that range of arts. So this is where it starts with a, a pack of kids in a school bus. And this is where immediately. Singing. This is where I went right to Mac. I just start singing shit because all of a sudden, little little flute to set the tone. Yeah. And you get that range. We're here, we're here, <laughs> and they start singing a fucking song. And as soon as they start singing a song, and it's not like a rehearsal or anything like that, I immediately just went, "Oh shit!" Because yeah. uh, I know I'm gonna enjoy this, but I know this is what he doesn't like. So yeah. immediately it was like, "Okay, let's see where this goes." Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, when we get to further into the song, you know what I thought of? Mm-hmm. I thought of Book of Mormon. I've yet to watch that. Because it reminded me a lot of uh, what uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker did mm-hmm. musical-wise, which is they did a good musical, a good song, mm-hmm. a great musical. Book of Mormon is fucking fantastic. But the lyrics are so fucked up. I've heard. You know? And it's like they say a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. And the first song, it's like literally, it's that. It's a kid talking about... You know, oh, <laughs> I, like no bru, uh, no. I, I get to be here and have no more bruises, mm-hmm. and nobody who hits me and shit like that. It was like, don't worry, there's no bullies here. And he's like, no, what do you mean bullies? I mean my dad. It was his dad. Bullying and so, him. so you know, it goes into that dark humor place, and it's mm-hmm. so well fucking done. Oh no, yeah, it had me laughing. Uh, yeah, immediately. As soon as I heard him chuck, I'm like, okay, safe. Yeah, the kids just started. The kids, of course, in sing song, start talking about how mm-hmm. they, you know. Uh, here at the camp, they're all you know, as one. They won't be called you know, sissy, uh, say ginger, whatever. All these yeah. names and stuff. Yeah. That every every calling. offensive name you can think of, basically, <laughs> in regards to what bullies would call, yeah. uh, you know, theater geeks, exactly. right? Anybody, anything you would call them, mm-hmm. they were mentioning all those names. And this is one little girl with a lift. It's funny. Thankfully, Randall put the subtitles just in time. <laughs> Every time she sang, the subtitles had the lift. The lift. Uh, and it's spelled it like the lift. Th, the th and shit. It's fucking great. I mean, that made me Dude. bust out even more. Yeah. And then comes uh, the, it Sam. Sam was great because Sam, Sam comes Sam. out and he just starts going, "I'm gay, I'm mm-hmm. gay, but not in that way." way. Musicals, Musicals make, make me, me feel, feel that, that way. way. So he starts singing about how he's basically gay for musicals, yeah. but not gay in sexuality. And then they're like uh, like three girls like, just huddle, hey, dude. huddle over him, and then the actual gay guy comes out, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not into TNA yeah. and whatnot." It was <laughs> fucking hilarious. Dude, it was, was so, so well placed. 
Like the mm-hmm. first initial song was just fucking so on point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick says, oh, see, he's like, I hate musicals except Sweeney Todd. This shit was hilarious. I, I, I will know. honestly tell you, Sweeney Todd is by far like my. It had, no, you know what it is? It's. I don't. It's my top two musical favorite musicals of all time for me personally. Sweeney What's the Todd. other one? I think I would have to say Jesus Christ Superstar. Wait, you did show me that. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, Jesus Christ Superstar is just really fucking well done. Mm -hmm. And then the movie performance. So fucking Mm -hmm. good. But, I mean, I've told you. Like, I like, like, dude, I like uh, Hairspray, Hair, Wicked, Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. Fucking Hello Dolly, like so many mm. West Side Story, Fame, like all those fucking things are just fucking great. Um, I, I don't know, like I'm just a fan of it. Um, well, I just saw this just like a snuff film. Um, it's I I don't know if it's only on Blu-ray. No, it's on DVD. I saw it on yeah. eBay, and it's also free on Tubi. Yeah, if you have Tubi, yeah. well, you can get Tubi. Tubi's free. Yeah. If you have Tubi, you can watch it. Yeah, you don't have to make an account. Oh, yeah, Hobo with a Shotgun. I've been wanting to watch that That's movie. That's a musical? No, 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 oh. no. But it's a great comedy out of Canada. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got to watch that. Because that's. I've heard it's a really good, but I got to watch it. Um, so, yeah, after that uh, opening scene, yeah, uh, we get introduced to Camilla. What is it, Camilla, right? Camilla Swanson. The daughter of... Kylie Swanson. Kylie Swanson, the, the mini, mini driver. driver. And she's just like oh, a cook. She's a cook in the camp mm-hmm. with her among her amongst her brother. Yeah, and I guess she just wants to be part of the, the you know well the cast and whatnot. N- well, what ends up happening mm-hmm. is uh, this is where we get introduced to Meatloaf. Meatloaf ends up being the director of the camp. Mm-hmm. Um, then she asks uh, Meatloaf's character, what was his name in the... Roger McCall. Roger, that's right, because they called him Raj. Yeah. So, Roger, uh, what's going to be the the production mm-hmm. that the camp's going to put on? Because at the end of every one of these, like, camps, they end with, like, a big production that they're going to do. Like, either they're going to do... And it's usually, like, a classic. Like, it's usually going to be, and ironically, it's usually going to be something like Phantom. It's going to yeah. usually be something like... Uh, King and I, something like that. You know, it's gonna be something in that realm. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I think they'll probably avoid doing King and I uh, up, nowadays, Merle? like that on a regular basis. What you gotta say for tonight? <laughs> but which Oya too? Raj, I thought that that was their father. Yeah, we but find then, out uh, it wasn't the father, yeah, but he was apparently dating. Yeah, uh, Mini Driver's character at the time, mm-hmm. um, but. Yeah, so all Roger says is it's just it's going to be something that will make your mother proud. And that's when we identify and realize, okay, this girl and the boy that mm-hmm. are in the kitchen are the kids that were, uh, you know, mini driver's kids. Mm-hmm. Um, then he goes out and he does his own song. Yeah. And Meatloaf knocks it out the park, as usual. Um, yeah, so let the kids know that... This is what we're gonna do. He he pre- he introduces the director, the one who's gonna be the camp director, because they always do it by students. So it's always a student production. So he runs the camp. Artie, right? Artie is the one who ends up running yeah. the uh, directing the the whatever's gonna be the production mm-hmm. for the camp. Which he did it well. He he yeah. got like a paper plate. He stabbed it like you know two eyes, and he just like dramatically put it over his face, and then a little girl. Yeah, like Phantom of the Opera. Well, oh, haunting. Oh, haunting! There yeah, go. they went with haunting it's of the theater. I think, theater. right? Haunting of the theater. I think it's haunting of the opera. It can't be opera because they're not—they're mm-hmm. not doing an opera. Is it haunting? I thought, I, I thought that's what I, uh, what I read. Damn. Stage I don't play, know. Haunting of. But yeah, the, um, sorry, that little... Uh, yeah, because now I don't know. Dead silence. Um, yeah, the kids are find out, and they're excited, you know, who's going to get what role. And then what happens? She starts singing the song. 
because also she tries to show she, like, her ability. Like, well, in 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 the kitchen, she starts singing. True. She starts singing because mm-hmm. she hears that it's gonna be that production. That it's gonna be uh, the production that her mom did and died. Mm. Uh, and died, you know, per- after performing. So, gotcha. um, damn! Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking for this, but I got you, man. <laughs> but yeah. So she starts singing. Mm-hmm. The brothers like, you know, why the fuck do you want to be a part of those? Oh yeah, these kids theater are ge- gig, are in theater a dream. geeks, right? These kids are dreaming. Yeah, like he said, he says a bunch of stuff about the kids. He goes, "Oh, they're like, you know, why would you want to be a part of these kids and like all this shit or whatever?" I could have sworn. Yeah, the haunting of the opera. Oh wow! The reference to the real life musical Phantom of the Opera. That's weird because they weren't even doing an opera. Um. Yeah. Right. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It was so good. So haunting of the opera. Uh, but very much, like, in tune with little, uh, Easter eggs to pay homage to the Phantom in that one. And they did a bunch of ones that we're probably going to mention because they were just so well done that there's no way we can't go without mentioning some of the references. And it's not only musical references, they did also horror references. The slashers, the well-known slashers we all know of, grew up with. Yeah. Which was, uh, it was, it was... It was a fun way to discover the reference. <laughs> Merle says, I get straight, stage fright on my OnlyFans. <laughs> What's up, Super Robs? Can't be, Can't be sued. sued. Like Willie from The Simpsons say, says The Shining will be, will be sued. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, it kind of progresses from there mm-hmm. to her wanting to audition. For uh, Camila Swanson to want, she wants to audition for Sophia. Yeah, the role of Sophia, mm-hmm. which is the role that her mother played when the play originally mm-hmm. was on Broadway, and then knife to mouth. <laughs> um, That's really like that. <laughs> and through all through all this, they start doing like little. You start noticing things that, and it's stuff that's been rumored about how productions yes. work. You know. The director is trying to take advantage of his position Mm -hmm. as director uh, to name his star for the thing, you know. And the way he's trying to do it is like, well, whoever basically fucks me gets to be the star. Yeah, because basically there was two Sophias. It was a Camila and then I think the girl called Liz. Let me double check. Yeah, Liz Silver. Yeah. She was pretty beautiful. Redhead, nice Yeah, yeah. But yeah, between something else too. Between both of them, yeah. And you know, Artie was the director, so Liz was all over him at first. Yeah. And then you know, Camilla is like you know standoffish. She didn't know she didn't want to sleep with him, but she really wanted the part. Yep. So he would like you know make moves on her, and when she didn't, uh, I guess accept him, he would pull back and have Liz do all the parts. That, just the back how they forth. did that was so good too. It was just the back and forth. Uh, like, you know. Whatever she kind of accepted, you know, fuck it, this is what I had to do. You would see her on stage. Mm-hmm. Then when she was like, no, and it was like, oh, so back to Liz on stage. So it did. It was so well fucking done. It was all. It was really well executed. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the process is like counting down the days to the day of the show it's while they're rehearsing. Twenty-ish days, thirty maybe days. He can't, he can't argue when it's ten kids on a musical. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what they were doing, though. No. <laughs> that was basically what they were doing. Um, <laughs> so, um, day before the show. One day. One day before the show. And we get another kill. And this I think we have to talk about it because... This was just... It was so fucking awesome. This is where we get to see... Fully get introduced to the killer... Right. So, oh yeah. So, okay. Clarification. So one thing that they did was they wanted to redo the haunting of the opera from the original that they did at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to do their own version of it. So they changed it to be in in the Japan war-fueled era. So they went with changing the mask from being regular phantom style you know just a plain white mask type of thing Mm -hmm. to being a kabuki mask um 
and using the kabuki mask mm-hmm. was going to be the 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 ghost of the opera you know mm-hmm. cuz they weren't going to call him phantom they went with ghost of the opera mm-hmm. instead of the phantom of the opera but <laughs> Dude, it's just, it's so fucking well done. Yeah. So we get introduced here to the new updated uh, version of this killer, right? He wasn't dressed like the one we saw in the first killing. Yeah. He's dressed with the new mask, with the Kabuki mask. And, man. What? Actually, remember, they did introduce the Kabuki mask to the kids, which yeah. is, you know... It was all right, but then the killer's actual kabuki mask it was just so, yeah, well formed. It just had like scars. Yeah, like you could tell maybe he was scratching himself, like he was all mentally messed up and just hating himself. Who yeah. knows what? It was. It, you know what it reminded me a little bit of too. Mm. A little bit of jigsaw. Yeah, a, a Billy, little bit of Billy, jigsaw. Uh, yeah, Billy a little Godolf. bit of the, yeah, a little, a little. Sure, I can see that. A little Billy. And because the style, right? Yeah, the, little the style little... of the way the face is, but it just didn't mm-hmm. have like the spirals. But the ma- the way the mouth is and everything it was With very cheeks, much yeah. like a like yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Um. We get the first kill. And the first kill. I. There's enough kills in there. I think we spoil this kill. The first kill Sick. is Artie. It's the director, mm-hmm. and. The way it happens. So the way this was after uh, Camilla rejected him, she yeah. stormed off, and then like everything silent, he hears like banging. Yeah. And it's just the build up to where he gets killed is wow. Yeah, they did a really good job with mm-hmm. you know they did the the kind of cliche stuff which is turning off the lights yeah. that kind of stuff right, but then the way he dies is he comes onto the stage, mm-hmm. he looks up and he sees one of the lights dangle. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, the light, boom, smashes right in front of him. Then all of a sudden, he's like running, boom, boom, mm-hmm. boom. All the lights start falling one by one until one falls down, catches him right on the foot. Right on the foot. Like a little like the clamp. Hook. Like a little clamp. Yeah, hook. The, the hook clamp just fucking boom. Nails right him. through the foot. <laughs> Nails him right like on the, and then pain it. What was that called in English? I don't fucking know. In the foot. Yeah. And just stabs <laughs> it, I guess, through the, through the stage because he can't move at all. Yeah. How you doing, Don? Um, and yeah, he's there fucking in pain, and we're like, shit, what's going to happen to him? The killer walks up. And then there's a, the screen, right? Oh, yeah. There's a screen, and like the light turns on. Whew. And this guy's just... This entrance. Yeah. It's like a this rock star entrance. rock star entrance. Yeah. So, yeah, and we'll get to that, too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's basically that. Yeah, it's like a rock star entrance. Right, he comes up to the curtain, face, face down, just and standing. it's an all white curtain with the lighting just mm-hmm. fucking perfection. Um, and he comes up, brings his blades up, mm-hmm. and the way the lighting is makes it look like there's a shadowy figure attached to him. It looks mm-hmm. so fucking beautiful, um, just a visual alone. Mm-hmm. And then he comes up. Uh, and gets close to Artie, and uh, he doesn't sing at this point, right? No, he just no, no. he just talks. I think, yeah, yeah he walks up to him. He gets real close. Yeah, that's what he does. And he goes break a leg. Yeah, break a leg. And he's like, you know, moving Artie. Oh shit! And you can see like the the foot shifting to the side, and we're like, oh my god, no! Is he gonna like you know rip or break or whatnot? Yeah. I think he just pushes Artie, and like the foot just comes yeah. off. Complete separation of front of foot yeah. to back of foot. Boom! Splits. We didn't review. We didn't go back and watch. I wanted to watch the slow motion, but yeah. at that second, that instant, you see it. You could see like the ligaments, the yeah. bones, just everything. It's so good, dude. Um, it was so and, good. And both of them, we just started cringing. Hey, like, Ellie. We're like, oh my god, Ellie. He watched the musical. <laughs> Yeah. And not only that, we started singing. You missed the starting. You, yeah. you missed the intro. We introed by singing. Ellie. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, we both cringed. We're like, oh, shit, I felt it in my foot yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's it. It turns black and finds out that he was chopped to pieces, but the kids were all worried. Well, no. There's a little bit more to that, Dad. Yeah. Yeah, the light bulb. Yes. 
That. That light bulb, yeah. Again. So he sees a box of swords. Uh-huh. Oh, and, yeah. they do, and they do a whole... Oh! But that's they, his answer dude, to, I like, escaping. The, that's another thing. What they did with sounds, moments that they chose to be, like... And we watched another movie where they use like corny sounds, and it was like, "Oh, this is just so stupid." While they're using these sounds randomly, mm-hmm. but they use them—not corny sounds in this—but they use song sounds mm-hmm. that were fitting to the moment and had, like, there's nothing to play this music. Yeah. But all of a sudden, he looks at it, oh, and you hear the fucking sound, and then you see a little gleaming light just glisten Sparkly. on the fucking toy on the not toy on the chest. Yeah. And just go, and you see a little like bing, and you hear it. And immediately we're just like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, go for the sword. And then he's like, but they're going to be fake swords. Whatever. Uh He goes for the swords anyway. And... Exactly. Horror movies that make you cringe or wince is the best because you were desensitized. Mm -hmm. It's true. When you get a movie that actually makes you go, oh! That's when you're like, okay. Because I don't think either of us did that at uh, at Scream. No, no, no. When we watched Scream, we didn't wince at anything. No, there's good kills but none of it yeah. was like you know um but yeah so he goes for the swords he he th- grabs one but yeah, that's, he's only it. able to grab it and that's it because at that point dude <laughs> closes the chest and oh yeah his hand rips his fingers off All so now he's fingers. now he's missing half a foot and half a hand yeah <laughs> drags him up to a single light that's sitting right mm-hmm. in center mm-hmm. stage Turns it on. Wait, actually, no. It puts was, his mouth on the yeah. bulb. And I was like, oh, shit, he's going to, like, close his jaw. And, like, no, yeah. he turns it on. Turns it on. Homie starts frying in yeah. his mouth. And right when it starts frying. Yeah, it just clap. bashes him right here. And you hear the... You, you hear the glass break yeah. inside his mouth. And then, obviously, the wiring is still active. Mm-hmm. Shit's plugged in and on. So the wiring is active. Fries him. Yeah, he just falls. You see a burnt face and whatnot. Yeah. yeah and that's when... All the kids were like... Yeah, that's where it crazy. cuts off and all of a sudden, you know, black. And then there was an accident. Yeah, and then it was... Was it not Sam, right? It was the other cuckoo guy. Which cuckoo guy? The light guy, remember? Oh, Joel. Joel, yeah, Joel. Joel. He was like, oh, uh, already got killed. You know, they found his body. In about, pieces. In pieces. Like, oh, you think this is related to your mother? He's talking to Camilla. Yeah. Well, like he gave off very much suspect vibes. Yeah, because he, no, he knows too much of the backstory. Yeah, we're not going to reveal who the actual killer is. Dude, do you want to do that or no? Well, let's see where this thing Yeah, let's see. We Maybe going. we'll reveal. So, yeah, he's... At the moment, we're not going to reveal. But Joel gave a lot of sus vibes. Yeah. When then, it came to... And I mean uh, killer sus vibes. <laughs> and at this point, yeah. I'm like, oh, he's definitely a second suspect for me. And from there on... What happens? I forgot already. Um, Roger gets the call from the Broadway producer saying that he's going to be there at the show. Isn't that a little later? No, it's right there. It's right after the death. Remember, because all the kids wanted to, all the kids wanted to call home. Oh yeah, true. They're going back and forth. Yeah, there was a little bit of back. Yeah, we kept on seeing Camilla with yeah, Roger yeah. inside the room, and then back and forth. But yeah, it was at that moment that he got the call, and the uh, Broadway producer said. Uh, he's gonna come and watch the show. Yeah, because he was um, Roger, which Meatloaf was trying to get in contact with uh, Victor Brady, James, uh, <laughs> played by James Thanks, McGowan. Nick. Just love that you guys have notes and and shit, remembering the names. Well, uh, James McGowan plays uh, Victor Brady. Yeah, which is like this famous. He's supposed to be like he's yeah. he's a big be the impression of a big Broadway producer. Like he puts shows on Broadway. And every time he contacts the receptionist, she's like, "Oh, he'll call you back. He'll call you back." Yeah. And I'll on his desk, on his desk, he has like for, foreclosure notes and yeah, you know, final notices, and you can tell he's like going crazy. Well, the to... the impression at this point mm-hmm. is also the fact that since Kylie Swanson, the mother, died at the beginning of the movie, that ended the production on Broadway. Yeah. And destroyed Roger's career because he had nothing else he can put on, mm-hmm. and his star, sh- his starlet, and the star show went to shit. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to touch Haunting of the Opera because of the the, the murder, mm-hmm. you know. So then here, yeah, exactly. Meatloaf is on it. Yeah, that's I mean. why Meatloaf is in the movie. That's why we we ended up choosing to do it. Um, mm-hmm. so. 
Roger immediately is like, yeah, we're going to do the show. Well, that's when Camilla walked in and he's like... Yeah. Yeah, but I don't... Yeah. yeah. Uh, she walks in and then he's, he gets the call. He's like, yeah, fuck it. We're going to do the show. Right? And she's like, I want to leave. You're not fucking leaving. You're doing the show. Yeah, Victor, when he told them, uh, who's your leading star or whatnot? He's like, oh, you know, we got our Camilla successor, the yeah, daughter, we- bam. Yeah. He got him hooked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, fast forward, they decide they're going to do the show. They do another sing song of that they're going to continue and do the show. Meatloaf started that oh, one. Yeah. Fucking great. Was it before or after he uh, unplugged the phone lines? He did it during the song. During the song, yeah. During the song, he unplugged the phone line. He was like, fuck this kid that died. You're not going home. Yeah. He was we just about to call the sheriff right before that call, too. Mm. He was going to call the sheriff, then he yells, fuck! <laughs> He's like, kid, do you really want to go home to your parents, or do you want to do the show, you know? Yeah, he convinced them by making them believe that, you know, going home is the worst thing mm-hmm. ever after a murder. And the slasher still... Stay like, here uh, where the murder happens. It's still on the loose and whatnot. It was an accident. Mm-hmm. It's all it was. It was an accident. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so sing song, unplugs phones, mm-hmm. um, and continues on to finish the production. Mm-hmm. Big opening night, right? Yeah, opening night. And this is where it gets uh, really fun. Mm-hmm. Because this is where it all goes down. And this is where you get to see the ghost of the opera, right? That's what they call him in this movie. Mm-hmm. Just go ballistic. And we see incredible, incredible kills executed with perfection on blood on mm-hmm. cuts on Man, whatever are... me- methods used bro I, i'm just impressed by those high notes yeah so it hits man oh one of the things that was so great was um that the killer sings too yeah he's uh he's singing he like it, that's why it becomes a musical mm-hmm. because it's when he's trying to express himself, even by himself, he sings. Yeah. But he is... This is why it also gave me a little Rocky Horror Picture Show vibe. Mm-hmm. Because it goes from them singing like a regular... What you would consider a regular Broadway-style song. Mm-hmm. To him singing like a heavy rock musical. And he's going full-on like fucking Van Halen-ish yeah, like, Shut style. Shut the fuck up! Yeah. Well, not like that, but anyways, he's like in the back room. <laughs> what I love, the back room with all the pictures of the kids and yeah. his blood sm- uh, like smeared all over their faces. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. I yeah. hate you're singing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's singing and shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also reminded me uh, a little bit of... Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The people that sit the fucking run to the hills. Run, run to the hills. Run for your life. Oh, my God. Iron Maiden, there you go. Yeah. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of Iron Maiden as well. Yeah, yeah. But it, that, it made me fall in love with the character, like, you know. Yeah. Not musicals as a whole, but, like, you know, this is a great start. Yeah. You know, take it easy, like every relationship, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, man, just, and his choices of weapons, man, especially those blades, which we find out later what they originated from it was just like wow. yeah the that's well that's what i ended up identifying the killer mm-hmm. what ends up identifying the killer is seeing the main weapons which is like i'm not gonna say exactly but they're just spiral blades with spikes on them but you realize what they're made of mm-hmm. and once you realize what they're made of you're like oh shit yeah random pointing it out i was like and but i had no. mentioned at one point earlier too that he might also be a killer because i was mm-hmm. like you know Situation yeah. makes sense. I, again, I, we're, I'm I'm trying to judge and juggle if we should spoil that or not. I kind of don't want to spoil it. <laughs> hey, Mac finally has a musical he likes. Um, so yeah, the killer comes out and he like man he is he does his main song which was it called it was a uh, it was a um, maniac something right no 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 you gotta see. Which we were singing along with it. Yeah. It was, yeah, sing, just, yeah. It was sing along with the killer's head as like the ball in each every word. 
Let's see, it was. Damn, there's so many. Well, because it's. Oh, Metal Killer. Metal Exit Killer. Metal Killer. And Metal Killer's oh, Revenge. Oh, Metal Killer's Revenge. Yeah. Metal Killer's Revenge is the one that. So I guess that's the name. Metal that's Killer. the one he, he. That's the one that he kills. Uh, well, not kills, but this is the one where he attacks Roger. Yeah, Meat almost, almost like the final, one of the final scenes. Which yeah. Is, oh. Yeah. That 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 battle that. that yeah, that 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 whole scene was so fucking great, man, mm. dude. They like that that musical scene. He hits notes that are just like fucking amazing, mm-hmm. right? He hits great fucking notes, and then they have the perfection to this. When all of a sudden he pulls out like an electric guitar, and he has a knife, and he grabs the knife, sticks it behind the strings, and uses it as part of the fucking instrument Mm -hmm. to like fucking, you know, change the tonage on the guitar itself. So, dude, it was immediately like, holy Mm -hmm. fuck, right? And I hear Matt go... Holy shit! <laughs> right? I fucking so, love it, yeah. he puts the knife at the top, you know, to change the tone of the electric guitar, starts playing and plays fucking. Like the, that solo was mm-hmm. fucking beautiful. Then you see him grab the knife, yank it down to like mid mm-hmm. frets, and just immediately continues playing more shit. And dude, yeah, exactly. It was metal as fuck. Um, man, it was just like fucking. Like chills with that fucking scene. Which, if you see, if you look at the menu, I don't think the cover has it. Yeah. Let me double check. No, it doesn't. But the menu, it's the knife. And then, uh, it's like, I can't do it. It's like this. Yeah. With the fucking horns and shit. Yeah. So it's holding the knife, but it's putting the horns. Yeah. So it's fucking amazing. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I love it. Randall's already gonna, you know, he's gonna purchase it. Yeah, so. no, I'm buying. I was, I was trying to see. I was hoping, I was so hoping that they had turned the soundtrack into a vinyl record because mm-hmm. I was like, I want this on fucking vinyl, but unfortunately, they only have it on, like on CD soundtrack. But I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna want it because Definitely worth it. Yeah. For me, it's like, dude, like I fucking love musicals to that level, like where mm-hmm. I love the songs, and if I love the songs, I'm gonna wanna have the songs. Like I have six different fucking copies. On different versions that they've released of Jesus Christ Superstar. And I do the same show with a bunch of other fucking musicals. So, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to want this shit. Um, and maybe one day, you never fucking know. We'll get lucky enough where they'll put that shit on a fucking vinyl. Mm-hmm. And I will immediately purchase it. You imagine, yeah, I mean, you imagine can, the cover? <laughs> no, no. You can imagine if they ever do like a single of Exit of the Metal Killer Revenge. Mm-hmm. And do the record shaped like the... Like the blade. Wow. Okay. Tell me that shit wouldn't be dope on one of the 45ers. Yeah, there you go. That shit would be beautiful. Fuck, I'm going to push for that. <laughs> I'm going to design it. <laughs> um, if you make records, call me. We got to do something. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was just, overall, definitely a must-see. If Absolutely. you don't want to purchase it, you don't want it part of your collection. Like I said, Tubi has it for free. Yep. It... Even if you want to own it, like, it's super cheap. I got this for, like, five bucks on eBay. It's going for that amount or less. There's one even going for, like, two bucks right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. this one I got, it's a Best Buy exclusive, which Oh, means, yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. A, yeah. a second short film, which, yeah, like Randall said, we'll talk about it shortly. Yeah, it's called The Legend of Beaver Dam. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, it's just, this movie completely caught me off guard. Because, like, I read, I read just the basic, you know, what it said, which was, you know, horror musical, all mm-hmm. that stuff. I'm like, cool. You know, I'm going to be down for a musical. Maybe it'll be a good one. I've seen some bad ones, some bad musicals mm-hmm. before, too. So, I know that there could be some, you know, some bad. So, I was like, you know, no, you never know. I've never heard of the movie. and never, Maybe. This was fucking spectacular to me. Uh, I had so many like fucking moments where it was paying homage to shit. Like in the first uh, initial song, once they arrive to the camp, they do a mini homage to Jesus Christ Superstar. Which I didn't right? notice. Like, like I said, him being a fan, 
Yeah, I I, I noticed musical little fucking Easter eggs while the, uh, while he noticed a lot of the horror ones, and there was one where I was like, oh. You know, which was they did an homage to uh, when you to was, Texas. The one you noticed was Leatherface. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw. There was a little kid, like you know, apron, a little. They were song. both in the set. Yeah. The, the one I noticed was a uh, pinhead from Hellraiser. It was a mannequin with a bunch of little pins. Yeah. Uh, which came to play later on. Yeah, the one I, we didn't notice, but yeah, it was a given. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth with the whole camp set, the cabins, um, the Halloween with the knife, of yeah. course. Um, Carrie. Yeah, they had a yeah. scene that's supposed to be kind of like the pig's blood, but it wasn't pig's it was blood. Paint. It was paint, but a very much very Carrie mm-hmm. style scene. Um, I think that was it. Yeah, and then they yeah they had the music the musical ones you know they and they referenced a lot of uh, the big names like they would reference Andrew Lloyd Webber, Songheim. Mm-hmm. Uh, they referenced a lot of things that are from. Like the Broadway, the musical scene. So there was a lot of homage play, placed throughout the entire movie. And that's, you know, when you give me Easter eggs like that, because you're doing a movie, paying respect in your own way with a horror fucking comedy, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to fucking love it. Like, I'm going to fucking love it. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, and they, they knocked it out the park. The writing on the songs was fucking spectacular. Mm-hmm. The performances were done by the actors. Yeah, right? all live, man. Yeah, like they performed the songs mm-hmm. and like Meatloaf sang his shit. Uh, the girl that played uh, uh, Camilla, Camilla, she sang her shit. Mm-hmm. Liz, she sang her shit. Sam sang her shit. What I would want to know is if the killer sang his stuff, because all of that was written by the director yeah. and and another co-composer that works with him. Dude, Ellie, you would fucking love this fucking movie. I'm guaranteeing mm-hmm. you will love this fucking movie. You know? Um, yeah, it was it was fucking magnificent to me. Um, all around, what you saw mm-hmm. online when it comes to reviews or people, oh, yeah. who, which I swear, like I when when I finished this, I, just, I immediately said this is a gem. Yeah. It's got to be one of those hidden gems that people just, you know, they just never made it out there. Like Otis for me, you know, Otis mm. was a fucking gem, right? And it became more of a gem to people after its release. And that's when all of a sudden the reviews and the critics gave it mm. higher praise. So immediately I was thinking this was going to be in that same vein. And to my surprise... Rotten Tomatoes, both critic and audience, has it like in... Yeah, the critics have it at 37%, per, audience 27%. 27, yeah, I'm sorry, which is... I don't, I don't think that's... Not, yeah. not, fa- I mean, not fair, but they're probably judging it's way too harsh. Uh, me, as a non-musical fan, I'm going to give it way higher than this. As it caught me off guard that it was mm-hmm. that bad with the audience score. Yeah. And it makes me think that maybe it just hasn't reached enough audience. Like, maybe it just hasn't been. Like, did, did it, does it mention, like, out of how many reviews? Yeah, the audience, about 500. And yeah, see, that's a low amount, man. The critics, about 27-ish or so. I, I really think that mm-hmm. if this reaches a larger mass, like a larger uh, amount of people, mm-hmm. that that number would change because I know a lot of people who would love this fucking movie. Yeah, IMDb has it a five point two, which I think that's decent. That's more reasonable. That's, yeah, more reasonable, decent. That's more reasonable. Um, again, I can't find the budget for this film, but it, in the box office, it did make seven grand. Yeah, which, it wasn't a big box office. Yeah, but it's made it's. I mean, I don't know the budget, but again, it made the majority of its uh, money back. Uh, in DVD sales and Blu-ray sales, a total about a hundred thousand. Hundred and two thousand dollars. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm adding here to the to the final mug. Uh, you know. Yeah. Adage. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, we're not gonna know. Uh, I mean, they did film in Canada, also, and Canada mm. does, you know, provide you finance to uh, to make your movie mm-hmm. uh, if you film in Canada. So. More than likely, they were, they had a lot of things covered mm-hmm. with just you know their uh, their their financial backing they get from Canada. Um, but yeah, no, this movie I would recommend so heavily to so many people. 
Like, I even feel like buying copies for people that I know that would love this fucking movie. Honestly, that's that's how much I enjoyed it. That's literally how much I enjoyed it. Like, yeah, I know people kept, who would want he this He kept movie. saying, I need to buy this, I need to buy this. Yeah. It, it's, I'm telling you. And even more when we saw the fucking second film. Yeah. But before we get to that. Okay, so, we gotta get to the big thing. We always go to this question. In this movie. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I know the answer to this. Oh, there's two. Which character are you? I have two. Artie or the killer? Artie was just, you know, going back and forth with the girls. <laughs> oh, yeah, Artie going back and forth, like, you know, just being the dick and the player that he is. Yep. Like, oh, you want to be part of my play? You know, right, Come on over here, baby. You know, give, give it up, you know. And then you have the killer, which, again, just... Yeah. You know, part of the uh, trench coat, coat mafia type shit. Yeah, the mask and uh, it's, just it's, it's so it's a beautiful fucking mask. Which it's I looked, I looked it up. I looked it up, and unfortunately, nobody has made it. Uh, fans or nothing like you that. Gotta reach out to um, Jose to, Funhouse, to the dude that did. Uh, well, maybe him too. Funhouse, uh, yeah, Mass Studios, the dude, or they probably his buddy. Yeah, his buddy. I made the demons mask that I bought. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Yeah, that mask needs to get made. It's fucking gorgeous, man. It's mm-hmm. fucking gorgeous. Elliot, you see, I think I posted it on my personal page. Uh, my last post, if you want to look at it real yeah. quick, or you can just search it up, it'll show you. It's a fucking gorgeous mm-hmm. mask. Um, but yeah, already you're the killer. Okay. What about you? Hmm. Trying to think. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Um, shit. Who am I you in this movie? Choose the same, dude. Never mind. No, no. Because, I mean, I can't be the killer because he hates the oh, musical. True, true. I, so I can't do that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm either I'm either Roger because I want the show to go on no matter what. Going now? Yeah, because she's going to check the mask. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, where are you Roger, going? Roger, Roger, because he, he he loves the musical so much, he doesn't care that a death has happened. He cares that dies. Just, <laughs> I want this play. Yeah. Uh, um, or, Sam? Okay. Because he literally says, I'm gay for musicals. <laughs> so, uh-huh. I mean, I think... I think that's. <laughs> I mean, uh, but I think I'm leaning more towards Roger. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm thinking personally. I'm actually Meatloaf's character in this movie. I uh, can see. I can see that if you're a director or a play. Yeah. Like, now. Yeah. It's my money, not even now. Yeah. So I, that's that's. I think that's where I place myself. My, mainly, I think Roger more than anything. It was like the show must go on. No we what. have a curtain call. We must meet the time. That's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I think that's 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 the right one for me now. So I guess I already know this, but I'll ask again so we can revisit it. Favorite? Yeah. So it is a kabuki mask, uh, Ellie. I think you missed when we mentioned that, but they they made they wanted to make the play. It's supposed to be a play on the Phantom of the Opera. Mm-hmm. They called it the Haunting of the Opera, um, and they wanted to add a uh, war t- war torn yeah. fuel Japan um, to the, I guess, vibe of the of the theater. Mm-hmm. So they changed the mask from being just like a plain white mask to being a kabuki mask, um, or or some say bukaki mask. <laughs> So, remember that. <laughs> yeah, um, that'd be good. But the favorite kill. Yeah, favorite kill ends up being which one? Oh, so great ones. The one with the scissors was great too. Oh yeah. The light bulb, the maw. Damn, dude. It has to be the first one, man. That was just played out well. It was just executed. Yeah. Phenomenally, uh, the the props. The uh, special effects, yeah, man. The prosthetics, like the, the 
the doll head they use on the on the head. Everything, yeah. man. That was so well. I, just, I was like, fuck <laughs> yes. And he said, yeah, another kind of performance. You know it. <laughs> it leaves your face all white. What about you, man? What was your favorite Assassin's Creed? Huh. Um. Remember, we, we got a, a, bo- a body count of seven, so. Yeah, it's 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 a very low. And this was the other thing that surprised me because I. We had the first kill right at the beginning of the movie. Then we had a lot of singing and all that shit. It took about forty minutes to the next kill. Mm-hmm. And whenever we realized that, I realized it was like shit. Because Max complaint about Sweeney Todd is that it took like 40 minutes to get to the first fucking kill. Mm-hmm. Because it was a lot of singing and then finally we get a kill. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, which ends up being Sasha Baron Cohen's character. Yeah. He's the first kill. Um, Mr. Pirelli. I love Sweeney Todd. Yeah. I'll have to <laughs> watch, watch it again, again with you guys. <laughs> Um, Maybe yeah. it will be better for you if you watch it with people, too. Yeah. But, okay, so... Yeah, 40 minutes in, I was like, really, it doesn't feel that way. Cause it was, yeah, because it's so I entertaining, t- I, man. Yeah. The minute you said that, I was like, shit, it's been 40 minutes since, mm-hmm. the, since like, that's the, week, that's the first kill we got since the beginning. Mm-hmm. And my reaction was, like, thinking, was like, shit, so Mac didn't even fucking notice it. So, he, like, that gives me the idea that he's enjoying what's going on you yeah know? usually movies in the 30 30 minute mark barely anything happens you're kind of bored yeah it's a slow start yeah or or or, or it starts strong then it just slows down yeah and it catches up like an hour hour and a half later no this is just non-stop with the singing yeah uh just all that man just... yeah and, they, and it had a it had you know it wasn't singing throughout the entire mm-hmm. thing it had regular conversation as well yeah but the story moved along really well. Mm-hmm. So I think my favorite kill ends up being the Artie's, the stage one. Yeah, that was great too. Because it was just a combination of all of it, man. The mm-hmm. lights on the floor, stuck down, and then that entrance on the curtain, right? Break a leg, becomes the, the liner for that death, mm-hmm. pushes up, and then smash to the light bulb. Mm-hmm. Like it was a combination of so many things to culminate in that one mm-hmm. fucking kill, and it was just fucking, it was executed, pun intended, perfectly. <laughs> exactly. So it was executed perfectly, man. Gonna give a final rating while we. So I had a bright idea to bring some uh, some snacks into the review. He wants to give me some some meat. We're gonna cross stream soon. There you go. We're gonna eat some beef jerky by Takis. It was electrifying. Electrifying. Oh yeah. Some Takis beef, beef jerky. Uh, that's why I have two bottles of water. Hot chili pepper and lime flavor. Well, at least it has the lime already in it. I guess. Uh, I do have milk also. If you might need that. I don't eat that much spicy food anymore, so I don't know how I'm gonna react to this. No. Yeah. So you want to do this and give the review? Yeah. Why not? Let's eat it. Yeah. Remember, we still have to do Legend of Beaver Dam. Oof. Uh, yeah. I know, it's which is, uh, like I said, if you buy the the Best Buy exclusive, which shows here only at Best Buy, it does bring two CDs. The other one's currently in the Xbox. But the other short film is a 12-minute film called... the Legend what? of Beaver Dam. Legend of Beaver Dam. Um, Legend of Beaver Dam starts off with like a little entrance of... Um, same thing like a campground thing. It felt very much like Friday the 13th. Yeah. Right? Um, you just... Shit. Alright. Well, fuck it. I gotta do it with you. Oh my god. My tongue is burning already. Again, I don't eat spicy food as some some of you guys. So, this is really spicy for me. Um, so, yeah. We it start starts off, off with a camp circle. Oh. I'm feeling it. With uh, the <laughs> camp circle and like the point of view is like we so caught we think it's a killer just heavy breathing going through the the forest. POV. Yeah. Uh, st- uh, st- <coughs> stalking the 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 camp the ca- campfire song. I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's a musical. <laughs> so 
Yeah, you we told see, me. we see, <laughs> we see the camp circle, and then the the camp director mm-hmm. starts talking. Oh, and have guy's you guys amazing. ever heard? Have you ever heard the story of Stumpy Sam? Stumpy Sam, one-handed man. Yeah. So. <laughs> Ooh. He did the Pocky Challenge. Yeah, Nick is crazy, with bro. Three chips, yeah. dude. No. And I think I think you you fucked up and I like rubbed your eye or something. Ooh. A, I think Nick, I, I, if I remember correctly. Oh, that would be bad. Oh God. Mm. Yeah. So, the path fi- the, the path counselor, path master. That was his shit. Whatever that guy. Yeah. I know you need milk. I have milk. I miss the milk. Yeah, milk. Water tends to kind of add to it a bit. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, I'm think it's working, but it's not. So, <laughs> you need some milk. <laughs> Move along, sir. Do you need milk? <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Let's do it like an auctioneer. So the kids were there. They were singing. Um, so uh, you have he a, said, "Yeah, he got oil in his eyes." Ooh. There you go. Oh, wait, so it starts off with, like, you know, like a scripture says, oh, back in, like, 19, whatever. 78. 78, there you go. Uh, I just noticed that was another reference to John Carpenter. Hmm. Another reference to John Carpenter. These are the Look font. Harder. They use the font for uh, Precinct. Uh, what is Assault it? on Assault Precinct. Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah. Which is the director's uh, favorite. The direct. The, oh, my God. <sighs> The director of this film, favorite director is John Carpenter. So, I'm loving this. Hey man, take me to the hospital. <laughs> Yo, fucking, he's gonna blow out his O ring. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the camp counselor gathers all the kids around and he starts telling the story of Stumpy Sam, but he tells it as a song. All right, and he starts singing the song. And it ends with saying, if you say his name three times, he's going to come and get you or whatever. And he starts going, Stumpy Sam, Stumpy Sam, Stumpy. And then says, Sam. And then, knife to the back. Several times. (laughs) We see a bunch of killing happen to him. Another kid gets killed. And then this kid that was kind of getting bullied by the camp counselor comes out looking like a hero, right? I think this one we can spoil. I think that's fine. Yeah, it's... Comes out looking like a hero and fights a guy that's Stumpy Sam. And he looks like a fucking orc, kind of, right? Yeah, sort of like a... Like a cross between like an orc and a zombie. That uh, reminded me of uh, Jason, you know, but less... (laughs) That's this. That's disfigured. Oh, he didn't it's have no the, arm. He literally had a stump. Just a right arm, a stump and shit. He sang as well. Uh, but his singing was rock. Yeah. Similar to the killer, in um. Ooh. Stage fright. Yeah. Yeah. Stage fright. That's it. Um, this is spicy. Good spicy. I like it. So yeah, this kid. Uh, he's just a hero. He fights him with like a a, a, a stick. Fights him with like the, the the guitar and well, shit. Well, he uses the guitar first, <clears throat> then you know throws the guitar to the side, and then he grabs a marshmallow stick that had two marshmallows on the, on top of it. Swing off the marshmallows, sloth from the Goonies. Hmm. Not as disfigured. Sloth was a little more disfigured. Sort of like kind of like melty skin, zombie eyes. Yeah, he looked like he was a charred crisp, but missing an arm. Oh. Um. The kid comes out to save the day. Well, after all the kids were making fun of him because he shit his bed. <laughs> uh huh. So it comes out, becomes a savior, and all of a sudden the kids are cheering him on, all this stuff. And then he's singing the song. And at that point, like you see, it's like a like it went from POV to you seeing his face. And Max says that at this point. Before we even realized, it was holy shit. He was the killer. Yeah, because he's just looking. He was down. getting bullied by the counselor, and he had ran off when the bull- when the counselor like outed him for shitting his bed. 
Yeah, because he was uh, correcting the counselor like with the terminology of stump of the word stump. Mm-hmm. So I guess the correct terminology, whatever it is, and the counselor just like what is it? Uh, Out of la- him. Lashed at him, saying that he that you know just listen to the he fucking song. Yeah, he listen, to, them. listen to the fucking song. You know, let let you it. You fucking sca- idiot! Let it scare you like last year, and it made you shit your pants. And all the kids are started laughing at him. The kid runs off. Yeah. He has this, uh, you know, this. Oh my god. He has this fucking daydream of killing that zombie. But at the end of the day, he is the killer. Yeah. He looks yeah. down, he has like a fucking uh, blade. It's and, the, a Leatherman. Uh, yeah. Like the like a Swiss Army knife, basically. There you go. And, and, and he had, used the blade and had hole, carved it, carved a hole in the back of the, the counselor's fucking head. That's yeah. how much he like stabbed him in the head. That the knife was bloody and had hair all over it. Great, yeah. And then he just looks up and looks around. And the reason we were trying to figure it out is because at the beginning, when you get that whole entrance screen where it says 1978, eight counselors went out to uh, to this camp or whatever, but only one mm-hmm. returned. And right when we're getting to this ending, after he killed the Stumpy Sam, mm-hmm. right? Is when there's still, we notice like there's still like five kids left. And we're like, hold up, they should said there was only one. So either we, he's gonna come back to life or something. Or what the fuck's gonna happen? Yeah. Stumpy Sam comes back to life one more time. Kid finishes him up. <laughs> I see Mac right now suffering. I just hear I hurt myself today. I hurt myself. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we get you know it's the reality. He's a killer, and then he just starts singing. And he, he finishes he, off the final he's like, note. He's like, yeah, was it yeah? Because they were singing na na, hey hey, they do that. Yeah, but they changed the words. So he just normally it goes good, bye. Yeah, I think he says today or not today. To die, to die. So he sings that, and then like it was a quick flash of the monster. Meaning it's him, and I guess he killed the rest of the... Hey Mac, his, come his, on, it's just a tip left. <laughs> That's a big old tip, Mick. What you got? Mike? You want to touch tips? Are we doing it? You want to touch tips? Touching tips. Wait, is this the same size? No. Wait, huh? He means his shorter for me. Okay. Same size. Oh, God. Touch tips. Shit, bro, I'm like... I here, Brian. Literally need that milk. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a sh- amazing short 12 minute of a film. Which I wish it was a full length film or musical, whatever the fuck. Yeah. The old, old meal room. Yep. I'll bring the next ones next time. I didn't expect. For the Legend of Beaver Dam to be a musical. I thought it was just going to be another fucking like, little short horror film or something. Yeah. You see stars, bro? <laughs> I mean, I feel stars in my throat. Where are you? But yeah, oh, this was fucking fun. <laughs> I'm glad I made that choice of buying it. Uh, definitely going to be uh, considering watching more musicals with random. I want Ellie's here, definitely too. If you're not a fan of musicals like uh, you, Nick, uh, <laughs> definitely this is a, a good start. Uh, well, you, you say you like Twenty Ton. This is another start. Oh my god! <laughs> I love it. <coughs> and I love it. Um, so yeah, it's a rating <coughs> out of ten. How many cops do you give it? <laughs> I give this fucking movie. Jesus, you're red. <laughs> red face. That's what I give it. <laughs> red face. I do. There's. I can't. I can't give it any less than a fucking ten. No for way. me, oh, this shit. thing is a fucking ten for ten. Personally, it's literally a fucking ten for ten. Huh. And you know what sells it for me huh. is literally that that first kill and that entrance scene for that killer. Whew. It was by far one of the best entrance scenes that I've seen for a killer in a really long fucking time. Mm-hmm. It was just perfect. 
the kills were fucking great. The yeah. songs were on point. The lyrics were hilarious as fuck. They lyric you have to listen to the lyrics on the end credits. It's one of those oh, kind of like Rectum. I remember I told you Rectum, Rectum I did on. the same thing. They sing to you basically. Yeah. They're singing they're singing words to the audience. Thanking you for watching. And yeah, but saying shit. you're probably just at home already. You probably left. Wait, if you left, how the fuck are you listening to this? Yeah. If you're listening to this at home, did you buy a Blu-ray or did you pirate this shit? If you pirated this shit, you know that shit's illegal. Like, it goes through this whole fucking <laughs> like, thing. I'm a pirate. <laughs> and, then he, and then he goes, yeah, I'm going to pirate a bunch of shit when I get home because oh, I'm a pirate. Like, yeah. dude, it's fucking genius, dude. It was fucking great. I enjoyed genius. every single bit of this fucking movie. None of it made me feel bored or mm -hmm. like if my attention went away from it at all or anything like that. I enjoyed every fucking moment. For me, absolutely. 10 for 10. Sweeney Todd has cannibal slitting throats. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I know he, he yeah. slits throats, but... Like, well, technically, right Sweeney isn't a cannibal. Well, he, just, he, <laughs> he just makes everyone a cannibal. Right, well, cool. uh, his... Oh, his, his I'll forget probably until next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, um... Mrs. Lovitz turns everyone into cannibals when she says, you know what? There's a shortage on cats, which is what they were killing to put pussy into pies. Are you talking about? Listen. Uh -huh. That's true. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, uh, yeah. I what mean... Do you, what do you give uh, the Beaver Dam? Oh, a I do the same shit. A five, uh, out of five, because it's out like, of five. Okay, yes, this is a short. Yeah, five out of five. Five out of five. Right? Yeah, that shit was perfection to me, man. Right. That shit was fucking perfection, man. And that's the twist just made it even fucking more beautiful. I mean, I thought the kid was gonna be the one who killed the counselor, but then we saw Stumpy Sam. I was like, oh shit, there's an actual killer there, yeah. and it's not gonna be the kid. I thought it was gonna be the kid at the beginning. Exactly. Because he's getting bullied, so I was like, every time they hold show bully, get bullied that much. He's gonna go off the wire and he's bro, gonna do something is, crazy. Is it me or like we're talking too loud? I'm like out of it. Right? It might be, I don't know. I'm like light headers, fucking, it's just too spicy. <laughs> but yeah, my rating for uh, stage right. I feel like I'm gonna go um, start singing, My chest is on fire, my innards are burning. And my yes, and yes, Ellie, I am hurting. <laughs> my chest is on fire. Oh. Uh, I gotta say, uh, it's gonna be less than yours, but for it to be my first horror yeah. musical comedy, it got eight point five in, which I mean, is I fucking beautiful. Yeah. Because Mac giving anything above a one on a musical <laughs> yeah, I mean. is is beautiful to me, you know. Oh, um, I mainly it. because when I told him, like, I fucking love music, it was like, I fucking hate him. Yeah. <laughs> it was the immediate reaction. It was like, I fucking hate him. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> wow. Um, I meant it as the Johnny Cash song. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. 8.5. And uh, Legend of Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. Yeah. Uh, five out of five. That was a fun short film. It was great. Yeah, um, that was great. And the song, aside from the aside from the the camp song, the actual the rest of the song that they sing is all like a rock song. So it was very much kind of like what they did in um, in in Stage Fright, where it was a lot. Did you just touch your eyes? No, I went like this. But okay, I'm, like, I'm focusing. <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw you do that. I was like, no. Um. So yeah. I thought I thought it was uh it was, I thought it was really fucking well done. And again the violence was really well executed. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, there's plenty of, of gore and yeah. ex excess of blood and, and they did a really good job with it. Mm -hmm. They did a really, really fucking good job with it. Um but yeah. Ultimately I would say absolutely buy uh Stage Fright. If you don't wanna buy it, watch it on Tubi. <laughs> so nice. I mean, it's a thought. We could definitely do. Um, Nick, I know since you're you're into you're already in YouTube as a content crea creator. I mean, I don't know hmm. how how's the whole cursing and whatnot is. Uh, I mean, they put parental control on that. So uh, basically, you have to inform that you're going to be doing adult content, mm. so it doesn't reach the discovery page for like fucking kids. 
You know, so they don't see Peppa Pig fucking Peppa Pig. Hey, kids, you like violence? Yeah, yeah. Because they do that. They'll clone Peppa Pigs and just make them fuck. All right. Definitely Nick. Dick. Dick. I said, Nick, thanks for this. Nick, thanks for the fucking idea. Uh, I mean, we could definitely do it. We could definitely do it. Mm. And we could do it still using the phone also. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, Possibly I'm going to fucking yell after this live. Woo. You're yeah, fine. It won't, won't be, be monetized, but yeah, after the three minutes, you're good. Yeah. Three minutes, three minutes. Um. Yeah, I mean, but something, def- def- something definitely we can do. I'm dying inside, bro. I'm trying to stall it because I just. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I think he wants to grab the knife now. <laughs> Listen, alright. Recommend it. Go watch it. You'll fucking love it. I, I, I can't see why people would not enjoy this fucking movie. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna buy it, buy the Best Buy version so you can get The Legend of Beaver Dam. Because it is fucking great. It is highly enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking great. Like, again, you know, like my famous quote. It's some fucking music. <laughs> um, this is the fucking rock, by the way. Um, so keyboard, it's about ninety percent done, I guess you could say. Ninety five. Ninety five. Ninety five percent done. All it needs is the rope and then the neon shine in the back. So the giveaway announcement's gonna happen this week, and from that you'll have until the thirty first yeah, to enter. Um, want me to hop on and drink? Uh. Sriracha. Holy shit. <laughs> well, the thing is, I don't mind you jumping on. We, I mean, we don't want to mind you jumping on. I'm going to have to get him a glass of milk first. Yeah, service. But, um, Yo, my since bo- we my have... bodies tingling, dog. Since we, <laughs> since we have a mic plugged in, we're not going to be able to hear you. Um, because we plugged the mic so we can have that at a distance. I don't know. I do like saying language. Let me get you milk. <laughs> Oh, shit. So, yeah, guys. Thanks for joining. Oh, no. We're not leaving yet. Fuck. Well, I'm going to get you. I don't know if he actually wants to jump on and do the Sriracha. Oh, yeah. Nick is fucking wild. He'll do it. He'll, he'll know Nick. Nick's, uh, a, Nick's a badass. You know that guy from the from the boys? Carl Urban? Yeah. Butcher? Yeah. Or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, Nick is way, way worse than that guy. Nick's a head honcho. Add some cinnamon into that milk. Not playing. <laughs> Give me the gallon. Not playing. Woo. Yeah, that's the only thing. Oh, yeah. I have a bad thing. We can plan it for another one. Where we don't have the microphone, like, hooked up. So, like, that. Well, I have my, uh, my, uh, AirPods. Maybe we connect my phone. Oh, yeah, we can do the, the share of the air. They Nick, can get you, one AirPod and you get the other. Nick, you want to do it now? Let me know. We'll just well, get I don't off. I we can switch that now. I mean, we'll get off and then we'll have to sign, put my phone on. And, we'll get scheduled for another yeah. time. Yeah. We'll do another time. All right. We'll do it for another movie because we'll have to get something else to do this again. True. Because at this point, you're going to be already cleaned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, we'll do it next time, bro. Yeah, because we would have to go live on yours. Mm-hmm. Connect your AirPods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Up to you. <laughs> How are you going to ruin our show, bro? <laughs> I do it every fucking day. No, I'm uh, like I said, if you don't mind, like, give us a few minutes to connect my shin. Hop on and we'll do that, bro. Mm. You down? I'll figure something to do. Yeah, next time's cool. Fuck, I don't know. Next time or not? Yeah, next time, next time. All right. We'll do it for next time. We'll do it for next time so we can properly plan the shit. True. And we need to get something else spicy. Not too, uh, this is a lot for me. <laughs> Remember, uh, my stomach shit. I mean, if anything, then I have to do it. I'll go heavy spicy. Yeah, you go heavy. I'll probably do the same or less, I don't know. 
But yeah. Does it feel better with the milk? Yeah, it's cooling me. It's cooling me. Stay cool, bird boy. Was that from uh, Batman and Robin? Arnold Schwarzenegger? What? Yeah, yeah, he freezes Robin and he's like, stay cool, bird boy. Or something like that. <clears throat> the Ice Age killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> Eat spicy ramen. Ooh, I did that the other day. Is it, oh, was oh. this worse or this white, though? Huh? Well, it was spicier than this with the ramen. I sweated with the ramen. Oh, dude. I sweated with the ramen. Sweated with the ramen? No, he said he's going to find something ghost pepper. Crazy. That is... That is heavy. Oh, it, 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 that's the way he showed... Um, put Merle into this, too. Merle will fucking outdo all of us, I know it. This guy eats <laughs> ghost peppers like nothing. He grows his own peppers. The guy has, like, no... Limit with that. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it could be a four-way. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I definitely... Like, if we order a ramen and split it. Split you down the middle. <laughs> hey, he, he, he set it up, bro. Yeah, spicy ramen is fucking fantastic. It does make you sweat, though. I swear, I had, the last time I had the spicy ramen, it looked like I just went jogging. Just come here and wear <laughs> white, white beaters and shit. It was, it was, uh, it was quite the show. The shirt, the shirt was was a little wet, a little mm. wet. Uh, but yeah, I, I I enjoy spicy. I've never gone as spicy as ghost pepper because mm-hmm. I know how heavy that can be. But I do like my share of spicy. Actually, I was just talking to you about me eating spicy the other yeah. day. Where I had, like, fucking chili, like, already chili seasoned fucking seasoning for a steak. And I added extra fucking chili to this shit. And mm. chopped chilies to put into the thing, too. So, yeah. Oof. I'll go really? into it, but, yeah. Anyway, I, I think do. I think we're going to end this one out. Because uh, I think Max ready to, like, fucking pass out. Yeah, I can't get up right now. <laughs> So this I'll is be, fantastically I'll be, I'll be the, awesome. I'll be the last thing you'll see when this line cuts. <laughs> it's usually He's not going to move. He's like, what? what? <laughs> There's an Evil Dead musical? Oh, my God. We need to find all these musicals. We had There's a Thanks Killing musical. Yeah, that. We need to find that. Now I need to know about a fucking Evil Dead musical. Ooh. TGI Friday's Ghost Pepper Wings. Bro. Is it an actual like you can buy it? Like is it like on DVD or some shit? I'm gonna have to find that. Thanks, Dick. We appreciate it. We appreciate you hanging out. Uh, Did you call oh, him wow. Dick too? Nick. <laughs> you got a CD? No, it's a groovy collection. Yeah. All right. Oh my God! There's a playbill to it. I need that playbill. Yeah, he said it was a Broadway show. I didn't even know that shit existed. Wow. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Enjoyed the pain and torture that mostly Mac received in this one more than me because this I'm a little more accustomed to the, the spicier level. Feel like I'm like high in a way. Like. <laughs> well, that's the thing that ghost peppers tend to do. They get you. Like, you feel the heat, but at the same time, you almost feel like a little yeah, well, out of it. I'm a little like, woozy. Like, if you here. ever watch, um, oh, God, what's the guy that does, like, I think it's called Let's Feast or something like that. The hot or, Ones? Yeah, Hot Ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Hot Ones, Let's Feast, um, yeah, his shit. When mm-hmm. they go down that line, when they get into those, like, fucking, to the, the bomb one. Yeah. Woo! You start seeing that shit. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, remember, if you're out there, break a leg and enjoy it. Uh, we'll be back with another review soon. There's a few. There's a stack of movies we want to go through, and a bunch of other things that we want to go ahead. And uh, it's like a tattoo, the adrenaline rush. Yeah, eh, pretty much. I don't get, uh, t- tattoos tickle me. But uh, yeah, thank you for hanging out. Hope thank you enjoyed you it. Have a good one. Uh, I'll probably be resuscitating Mac after this, uh, after I turn this off. I feel like he's just gonna, like, 
drop. Yeah, I can't contain. I'm just like. <laughs> um, guys, yeah. Thank have you guys. a good one. Uh, we'll be back soon. And uh, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. We're here. Stop. We're here. Stop looking at me. Rap Boom Reviews is, is here. here. Goodbye. Goodbye. I think I'm gonna die.